Wow, 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 wow. Good morning. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the morning Devo. Um, the inevitable happened. I overslept. So yesterday, I kind of thought that um, this would happen because I was up late um, doing some foreign exchange trading at night because of the time zone differences around the world. Um, there's trading going on, currencies trading. Amen. And I was I managed to um, stay in the profit last night, to say the least. I'm learning. I'm learning. So um, in around 70 days, 85, 70 days left, uh, I'm going to be rolling out something that I do at night as a night owl, you know, entrepreneur at night, uh, making money online in different ways. So I truly believe that we should have different ways, streams of income. Amen. Um, that we could um, use to expand the kingdom of God and to bless our lives and bless our families' lives. Because the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is what? Stored up for the righteous. So today we're going to go about some word pictures. The word pictures in the Bible. The metaphors. When you see the Bible is like in the Bible. The description that the Bible has about itself. About the word pictures that it represents in the scriptures. They're fun to look at and they're interesting. And it also explains a lot of things why people get some scriptures out of whack sometimes in their minds. For instance, a quick example, then I'm going to greet some people here. Um, we all know that Jesus said he is the door. And we all know that Jesus doesn't have hinges and he's not a door with a knob. It's a, it's a metaphor. Amen. It's a description. It's a word picture that describes the Bible in the Bible. So we're going to go over some um, some interesting ones today, this morning. won't be too long. I don't want to hold everybody up. Normally, I'm here at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and um, I'm almost at the end of the, of the half hour already because, like I said, my, my daughter said, don't you do your morning devos? And I said, yeah, I do. And she says, uh, it's after 10 o'clock. And I said, oh, no. And I looked at my trusty alarm and I must have pressed the off button instead of the snooze button uh, so dangerous um, you know when you're up late and try to get up early so have grace upon me you know ask for forgiveness but I'm here let's get into it right let's get into it God is good Pastor Michael Jakes good morning praise the Lord praise the Lord welcome to the morning Devo brother Damien good morning my brother God bless you so yeah, let's let's do that. Let's go through some word pictures in the scriptures. Got my my pad here ready to go with the notes. We're gonna go through some of them. Not, there's a lot of them in the scriptures. You know, when you see the Bible or the Word or the when it, the you know the kingdom of God is like heaven is like, you know, those are word pictures that describe the Bible in the Bible. So. For instance, another one real quick, and then I'll give everybody a minute to share this out. Another one is the Bible is compared to gold and honey. And we know that there is treasure in here, but it's not gold and honey in here. It's a description. It's a word picture. Powerful word pictures, by the way. And it paints the picture in our minds of what God's word is, who Jesus is, who the Lord is. So it's amazing how... God inspired the writers of the scriptures to, you know, play out these word pictures, to give us these word pictures so that way we can see them. And I believe it helps us. It helps us more to get a greater vision, a better picture of what God is trying to say. Remember when Jesus spoke kingdom, he spoke kingdom and a lot of people missed it because it was going right over their heads, including the disciples. So Jesus had to speak to the public, had a public ministry, and then he would take the twelve and speak to them and open up what he was trying to say more clearly to the disciples on the side because of the word pictures that were in the scriptures. And when Jesus preached kingdom, like for instance, he said, you know, uh, destroy this temple and in three days I'll rebuild it. The Jews were like, it took all these years to build a temple. How are you going to rebuild a temple in three days? Word picture, metaphors. And Jesus used it all through the scriptures. God uses it all through the scriptures to talk to us plainly and to show us and give us a vision and a picture. Amen. So that's what these word pictures were there for. It describes the Bible in the Bible. So the Bible confirms itself. Amen. It's a beautiful read. If you ever read the scriptures, 
the Psalms, the Proverbs, right? You'll see a lot of word pictures in there. So let me give you a minute to share this out when we come back. The first one we're going to go over is uh, Jeremiah 23, 29. Jeremiah 23, 29. We'll come back to that right back. to the Morning Diva with your brother DJ Sandrock every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here at So Winners with a Z and also on social media. Amen. So whether you're watching on social media or on So Winners with a Z .org, I welcome you personally. I bless you personally in the name of Jesus and I hope you get some blessing, some inspiration, some encouragement from this word today. We're talking about the Bible is like. We're looking at some word pictures that Describe the Bible in the Bible. So the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Psalm 19 verses 9 and 10. That was the first one I was talking about earlier before I uh, took the minute break. So how about this one? Jeremiah 23 and 29 does not my word burn like fire says the lord it is not like a mighty hammer is it not like a mighty hammer that smashes a rock to pieces let's let's see how the amplifier says it is not my word like fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test says the lord and like a hammer that breaks the most stubborn rock in pieces I heard it say that it breaks the heart to pieces. But of course, God is not using a hammer. And of course, he's not, uh, his word is not the type of fire that we're thinking. But we put, it puts immediately a flaming fire in our minds. Amen. And that's, that's kind of cool. Like a flaming fire. The Blaze Bible study that I do Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays at 10 o'clock was based on a Jeremiah fire. The fire that was shut up in his bones. The fire that was placed in his heart. The word of God, that fire. When I read that scripture for the first time, I said, that's me. That's what I want to represent. The fire of God that shut up in my bones and I have to get it out. And that's how the blaze um, Bible study came to be because of the Jeremiah fire. But this is word pictures. God places these pictures in our, in our minds for us to get somewhere when he says the Bible is like. The Bible is like more to be desired than than gold, yea, than much fine gold, <clears throat> sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb, just like in Psalm 19, 9 and 10. Psalm 119, 103, very similar as well. The Lord said to prophet Jeremiah, is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. It's amazing. The metaphors, the word pictures that God places in his word so we could see what he's saying, right? So this is a powerful book. The Bible says also that this is a double-edged sword is alive. The book is alive. Now listen, this book does talk when you read it. But it's, and when, it, when the Bible says it's alive, I've never seen this book fly around the room or, or just get up and say, hey, what's up, Sam, and start talking to me. No, the word of God is what's living in here and breathing right inside the word. How about this one? The Bible is like a lamp. You ever heard this one? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This Bible, God could do it. God could do whatever he wants. And if I went a dark path, he could use this, um, this material Bible, right? He could use it and he could light it up if he wanted to. 
actually there's a reflection on the bottom right there if you wanted to. But we know that's a word picture. We know that when we don't pick up our Bibles, turn into a flashlight. But his word <clears throat> is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Psalm 119 and 105. You also see that Psalm 119 and 130. How about this one? 2 Peter 1 and 19. Because of that experience, we have even greater confidence in the message proclaimed by the prophets. You must pay close attention to what they wrote. A New Testament writer talking about the Old Testament prophets. And he says, you must pay attention to what they wrote. For their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and Christ, the morning star, shines in our hearts. <clears throat> That's amazing. How Peter and Second Peter, that was Second Peter 1 and 19, speaks of the prophets that spoke word pictures. And he's repeating it here. Their words are like a lamp. Their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and Christ, the morning star, shines in our hearts. Word pictures. You know, I do some rap. Uh, haven't did a rap in a long time, but I did rap and I do rap uh, every now and then. And there's a lot of word pictures that I place in the lines, right, between the beats. Because I want to paint a picture to where I'm going. I want to paint a picture to, so you can see in your mind where I'm going with the message. Right? God did that all throughout the scriptures. So we could see, so we could see with our spiritual eyes where he's taking us in the message, in the gospel, through the prophets, through the stories in the scriptures, through the kings, through the wars, through the famines, through the victories, through the exodus. God wants us to see what happened. He wants us to see what he's saying. He sees everything we're thinking. He sees everything we're saying. And he wants to have that relationship. And he wants to see. He wants us to see what he's saying to us. Right? His children. The Bible is like a lamp. We already see that repeated in the New Testament. Um, Peter reminding us of what the Old Testament prophets wrote about the light in the lamp. The Bible is like food for the inner person. It's like milk. Remember this scripture here? 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 3. Dear brothers and sisters, when I was with you, I couldn't talk to you as I would to spiritual people. This is Apostle Paul talking to the church in Corinth. I had to talk as though you belonged to this world. Ooh, that's a rebuke. Or as though you were infants in Christ. I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food, because you weren't ready for anything stronger. And you still aren't ready, for you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? Aren't you living like people of the world? Wow. A lot of wordplay there. Spiritual milk. You know, Apostle Paul is saying, look, I can only give you milk. You're not ready for the meat yet. And you're still living like you're in the world. Wow. If the Apostle would preach that right now um, among our churches, um, it would sound the same. And as it would have the same amount of strength that it has right now as we read it. If he was on the pulpit through America, through American churches. And you still aren't ready, he said, for you still... For you are still controlled by your sinful nature. You are jealous of one another and quarrel with each other. Doesn't that prove you are controlled by your sinful nature? But he starts it off with a word picture. He says, I couldn't talk to you as I would spiritual people. I had to talk to you as though you belonged to this world or as though you were infants in Christ. Babes, babies, right? He said, I had to feed you with milk, not with solid food. And we know, obviously, that he didn't have, you know, a container of milk with him when he said this and started pouring, you know, cups of milk and giving everybody the milk. He was using a word picture as a rebuke. It was a big ouch to the Corinth church, the church in Corinth. But I mean, you know, Apostle Paul was there. He knew what was going on. He saw with his own eyes and he was inspired to say what he said by Holy Spirit God. And he said it. And it's, it looks like he's saying it with boldness. With power and he didn't hold back punches right there right how about this one hebrews chapter 5 verses 11 and 13 there is much more we would say like to say about this but it is difficult to explain especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen 
You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God. Here it is. You are like, this is the word picture, you are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. You know, when babies, and how accurate is that? Do you give your infant baby like, you know, rice and beans and chuleta and all that stuff? You know, and if you do, don't even admit that when they're babies, they can't eat that. They need milk. They have to learn how to um, nourish and, you know, get nourished, get fed with liquid first, and then they go to solid food. This is the way um, this author in Hebrews is speaking to the church, speaking to believers. Instead, you need someone to teach you again, again, the basic things about God's word. You are like, this is when the Bible uses word pictures. The Bible is like, you are like, heaven is like, you are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Right? You have to teach your children when they're babies, when they're infants, to do what we have a six month old in, in our house on milk still. Even though I was telling my wife, slide some cereal in there so she could get some sleep at night so you know kind of knock the baby out my wife is not she's not going for it but yeah um that milk that spiritual milk that we should be craving but then we shouldn't stay in that place the word picture says that we should be getting older and getting off that milk weaning off the milk right and getting into some solid food in the word of god see what the amplifier says i'm a, I'm a little curious the Amplified says on the same verse. It's not a, it's not as um it's not as much there on Amplified. Let's go back here. Hebrews Amplified. And let me do 13. Concerning this, we have much to say. Same Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 to around 13. This is the Amplified version. Concerning that this, we have much to say. And it is hard to explain since you have become dull and sluggish in your spiritual hearing uh, to listen. Wow. In your spiritual hearing to listen. And I don't know why it's not going past verse 11. Let's give this a try. And read full chapter. Here it is. 11 and verse 12. For though... By this time, you ought to be teachers because of the time you have had to learn these truths. You actually need someone to teach you again the elementary principles of God's word from the beginning. And you have come to be continually in need of milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is doctrinally inexperienced, unskilled in the word, of righteousness since he is a spiritual infant and if you go on the scripture says but solid food so the milk is for the spiritually immature the infant the ones that are coming into the faith but solid food verse 14 is for the spiritually mature whose senses are trained by practice to distinguish between what is morally good and what is evil that my friend you need to be mature to distinguish between those two. Because if you haven't noticed um, the word picture here about good and evil, spiritual milk, solid food is alive and active because some people who claim to be born again believers, teachers, pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists like myself, they still are in the world and their thinking needs to be redone and they need to go back to the basics. But they're saying that this, that, and a third, but you can see in their actions, in their life, that it's not. It's not happening and they're still on milk and but they're going around thinking that they are on solid food. So we need to be careful. I need to be careful with word pictures like that. So that way I won't fall into those same areas. Amen. We need to sometimes we need to just take it on the chin because God loves us. He wants us to be steered in the right direction. He wants us to be, you know, careful of who we listen to, what we do, what we listen to. Right. And we'll move forward. First Peter chapter two and two says like newborn babies, here goes a like. So there's a word picture. When you see the word like, it's usually a word picture, a metaphor in the scriptures. 
Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. Cry out for this nourishment. Beautiful word pictures right there. Um, it looks like God has a lot to compare us with babies and infants and milk, right? And, you know, who could deny that a baby needs milk? The Amplify says, like newborn babies, you should long for the pure milk of the word so that by it you may be nurtured and grow in respect to salvation, its ultimate fulfillment. You see, it is a process. You get saved and people right away, they want to eat meat. You won't, even, you won't even know how to digest meat when you first get saved. But you are to crave pure spiritual milk, of course. Listen, when I first got saved, I was on fire. I'm still on fire. And that's why I go on these lives so you can watch me burn. That is a word picture. You're not going to see me light myself up off the flames. But that is a word picture. That we on fire. That I'm on fire. And I do these so that way you can watch me burn. Amen. A word picture. What else do we have? And I won't keep you too long. I know usually around this time we're winding down. Amen. But thank you for coming through. Uh, I apologize again for the lateness. Um, but the inevitable happened. You know, you, you press those snooze buttons. And I'm a wellness coach. And my wellness coaching, um, how I study it and what I know about it, you're not supposed to press snooze. You're supposed to get up in the first alarm. Uh, and it recharges your body. When you get up, you know, when you hear the alarm at the set time that you were supposed to get up, you're supposed to press stop on the alarm and sit up on your bed, sit up on your sofa, wherever you're at. And then you'll feel the surge of energy coming to you. And then get up and go about your business, you know, wash up and all that stuff. But, um, you know, with my struggle in the morning, I kind of press snooze. And what happened? The inevitable. You press stop. And then nothing's going to happen. Thank God for my daughter. She was like, oh. she woke me up. She was like, aren't you going to do your morning Devo? It's past 10 o'clock. So I was like, oops. The inevitable, right? Because I was playing around. Playing with fire. Another another word picture, right? You play with fire, you get burned. And um, I pressed the stop burn button and that thing burned me. Kept me from waking up. But God woke me up, amen, ultimately, um, through my daughter. He used my daughter to wake me up. What else do we have? So we have, we have the Bible has a lot of metaphors about milk, solid food, and all that. Honey, there's a lot of food going on here. Now I'm getting real hungry. Um, God's word is like a mirror. How about this one? James chapter 1, verses 23 and 25. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see, it's like word picture. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do not, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. So it's like glancing at your face in the mirror. That's what the word is like, right? A word picture. Beautiful the way God does this. Using people, inspiring them to write what he's trying to show us. Word pictures. He's trying to show us what he's saying. Why? Because Jesus is no longer walking the earth, you know, physically among us. So he left these inspired words to the authors so that way we could get the picture in our mind. Right? We could get the picture in our mind. Matthew 13, 1 and 9. Um, that's a lot to read, but let's see where the word picture is. Later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. A large crowd soon gathered around him, so he got into a boat. Then he sat there and taught as the people stood on the shore. He told many stories in the form of parables. Those are word pictures. God, Jesus used a lot of word pictures in his parables. He told many stories in the form of parables, such as this one. Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered them across his field, some seeds fell on footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with the underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon wilted under the hot sun 
and since they didn't have deep roots, they died. So he's, Jesus is painting a picture about seed time, harvest time, about how things are planted, the word of God falling on good ground, bad ground, you know, uh, ground that can't get rooted. And he's painting a picture. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil and they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. And, you know, this is my secret to those that I pray a hundred fold back increase every time they sow into the ministry or bless my life. And I know they're going to be a blessing to others. This is where I get that 100 times as much. That 100 fold, this is the scripture I got it from. A word picture and I use it because I know it has power. A hundred fold return blessing to everyone who sows into this ministry. I get that from the word of God because he showed it to me, right? Through a word picture, through a parable, through Jesus speaking this parable. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Word picture. Um, pretty much everyone has ears. Amen. Uh, but he's talking about spiritual ears. It's a word picture. But we can understand this clearly because he's using seeds, ears, listening. He's using things, seeds, um, soil, right? He's using things that we can easily understand. Jesus is not speaking in riddles. God doesn't speak in riddles. He speaks sometimes in metaphors, word pictures, that we could see these things and then our hearts understand. Especially when you have Spirit of God in you, Holy Spirit of God in you. Good morning, Sister Joanne. God bless you. Amen. I woke up late, so um, forgive me. Usually we're, we're about done. So Paul wrote about the cleansing power of the water by the word. And um, that's amazing. I was just being asked yesterday, last night, or yesterday during the day, about baptism, baptizing a baby. Um, and we were talking about water and baptism, sprinkling and all that. Uh, traditions of men that have, you know, that they baptize babies. And we, the water thing, you know, came into the picture. That's a word picture. A word picture because we know that, you know, it's going to be actual real water that's being used to baptize this, this child, this infant. But there's a difference between some traditions of the different churches. Catholic Church, they sprinkle um, and they, you know, sprinkle holy water on infants as baptism. Um, pretty much Christians um, on this side of the camp. We don't baptize, we dedicate the child unto the Lord because of the age of accountability. Um, if a, I got baptized as, in the Catholic Church when I was a baby, had no choice in the matter, right? But then when I came to the age of accountability, I decided to get baptized because now I knew what was happening, what was going on. So the water comes up. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 26 for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. You see the, the, the water there, right? Holy Spirit. You see that picture in your mind. Husbands, love your wives is the amplified version. Seek the highest good for her and surround her with a caring, unselfish love, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. Oh, you don't see it there. On, in that version. Amen. Let's see. Okay. Uh, that's not the one. I think it's Matthew 13, 18, 33. Now listen to the explanation. Matthew 13, 18, 33. Now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. That happens all the time. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in their hearts. After a church service, if you're not holding on to that word, there's someone waiting for you outside of the doors of the church. And that's the enemy to try to snatch that word out of your heart. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Unfortunately, that, that happens so much. 
but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the law of the wealth, so no fruit is produced. The seed that fell on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest, here it is again, of 30, 60, and even 100 times as much as had been planted. Here is another story Jesus told the kingdom of heaven is like. You see that? That's the word picture. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his, in his field. But that night as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat. Then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull out the weeds, they asked? No. No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters, which if you read, you study the scriptures, the harvesters, uh, theologians say those are angels. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them in bundles and burn them and to put the wheat in the barn. Here is another illustration Jesus asks. The kingdom of heaven is like, you see that? A mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it's sometimes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like, you see that? It's like, word picture. And this is Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast of a woman used in making bread, even though she put only a little yeast and three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough and it rose above, right? And I'm sorry, I can't see oh, the cleansing power by the word of the word. I, I, I forgot to say cleansing power. I was thinking baptism. I apologize. Because that, that's another word picture that God uses. Okay? So... How about this one? Let's talk about the water, and this will be the last one. Keep in mind, the water for washing represents the word of God. So when you see the washing of the word in the scriptures, that means the cleansing of that the word of God does is over our minds and our hearts and our lives, right? That's what it means. So while water is for drinking, it also represents the Holy Spirit. It also represents the washing. Let's just see it. John 7, 37, 30. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, anyone who is thirsty, come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. So water representing Holy Spirit God, water representing cleansing, water representing um, God's word that cleanses, water representing that the water that Jesus offers us, offers us will not leave us thirsty anymore. You will never thirst again. Word pictures. Amen. Because God, through Jesus and Holy Spirit, God, amen, spoke word pictures so we can understand more clearly. So that we, he could break these things down so we could see what we're reading. We could see what he's saying. Right. So it's plain. Ephesians 6, 17, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, this is a, a word picture. I don't even know what a salvation helmet looks like, but we need to put it on. The armor of God that we need to put on supernaturally. It's a word picture, but we need to put it on. God doesn't put it on for us and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So basically, this is a sword. The word of God is a sword. But you don't see me, you know, you know, Thundercat, Thundercats, oh, you don't see me with a sword here. You see me with the scriptures here. It's a word picture. Jesus explaining, God explaining, Holy Spirit God explaining to us through pictures. So in fact, when people heard Peter preach at Pentecost, they were cut to the heart by the word of God. And there was no swords being ripped out and people's heart being cut out, Right. Or people's being cut, period. Remember, um, the disciples in the upper room waiting for the promised Holy Spirit, received Holy Spirit. God came out preaching in tongues and different languages. And the people were like, are they drunk? How could they know? How could these 
uneducated people. Most of them were un- uneducated according to their society and their you know way of thinking. How could they be speaking in our language? They must be drunk. And the disciples were like, no, so it's like noontime. We wouldn't be drunk anyway at this time, even if we did get drunk, right? So people were astonished by what they saw. And people always are astonished by the word pictures that God, right, is painting. Jesus did it. He's still doing it through the scriptures. The Bible is rich in metaphors and similes that convey precious truth that we need to know. So understanding biblical imagery is one of the keys to Bible interpretation accurate bible interpretation that's all i had i know it's like a bible study bible study um but i said let me let me do it i wanted to do it anyway uh, as a bible study and last night i missed the blaze i got home late and um so yeah so my time is being challenged but amen god gave me a new day he gave you a new day and the weekend is here so happy friday god bless you all i pray that god will bless your weekend tremendously you will get into his word. You will see the imagery that he's painting, that he's already painting in his word. But let it be painted on your heart. Amen. Let, let us see what God is saying through the imagery. Amen. Through the word pictures. And let us respond, react, and activate those truths, the living word in our hearts and our minds. Amen. The living, breathing word of God. Amen. That's a word picture too. So if you didn't catch that. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.